Hi guys, how are you all doing? So in this video, I'm going to show you a different form of web scraping. And this time we're going to scrape APIs. I'm not going to bore you with the details of what an API is, but there is one thing I want you to remember is that when scraping APIs, most of the time, but not always, you won't scrape the HTML markup, means you won't use XPath or CSS selectors. Instead, you will be dealing with a big JSON object that you have to parse it using Python, okay? So as an example, we're going to scrape this website, quotes to scrape.com slash scroll. This is a very known website and you will find it pretty much on all the tutorials out there on the internet. We're going to start with it so I can be able to explain to you the basics because it's very easy. And then we're going to tackle real world example. Okay. Now, first thing first on this website, there is no pagination, but as we scroll down, new quotes gets inserted. This means we are dealing with what we refer to as dynamic pages, or in other words, pages that are dependent on JavaScript. But this doesn't necessarily mean that we have to use Splash or Selenium in order to scrape it. Let me show you. So I'm going to scroll up first, and then let's open up the developer tools. So Control Shift I. As you can see, I'm on the network tab. And since we want to check if there is an API, we have to apply the XHR filter, as you can see here, which stands for XML HTTP request. Okay. Now I'm going to refresh the web page. Okay. So we have one request quotes and then page equals to one. Let's open it up under the headers tab. Here is the request URL. As you can tell, it's completely different than this one. So we have quotes.toscript.com and then slash API slash quotes page equals to one. So one thing to note here is that the API URL is pretty much always different than the actual website URL. Okay. Now let's check the preview tab. So as you can see, we have what we call a JSON object. We have some key value pairs. We're going to look at them all later, but what's important here is this quotes key. So let's expand it. All right. So we have a couple of objects inside it and each object does represent a quote. So we have the other object, which contains the name, the slug, the link, and then we have the tags, which is a list as you can see. And then we have the quote text. So this was everything for this video. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to scrape the first page of that API. Okay, guys. So first of all, let's start with a fresh project. So inside my projects folder, I'm going to scaffold a new project. So scrapey start project. I'm going to call it demo and the line API. Now let's get into that project folder. So CD demo and the line API, and then let's create a new spider. So scrapey gen spider. I'm going to call the spider quotes, and then I'm going to set the URL as quotes dot to scrape dot com. Going to change it later. Now, one quick remark here when scraping APIs, always use the base template. And that's because if, for example, you choose to use the curl spider template, you won't be able to define the rule objects. And most of the time there will be no links to follow. Okay. Now I'm going to press enter. Perfect. As you can see, this spider has been created. So let me show you a trick. So if you want to launch VS code from the Anaconda prompt itself, you can type code space period. Okay. I'm going to press enter. All right. Now let's leave everything as it is. So back to Chrome. And let's go ahead and copy the request URL. So I'm going to copy it back to VS code again. Let's open the spider file. Sorry. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace this URL by the one we've just copied. There we go. Now down here in the parse method, let's go ahead and print response.body so we can see the response we get back. Control S to save the file. Let's open up the integrated terminal. You can go to terminal and then new terminal. 
Okay, now let's launch the spider. So scrapey, crawl, quotes. I'm gonna press enter. Okay, now let's see the response we got back. Okay, so we have a JSON object, as you can see. And from that JSON object, we want to get the quotes key because it's the one that contains all the quotes, okay? So the next thing we need to do is we need to convert or cast this JSON object to a Python dict so we can extract whatever we want from it, okay? So to do that, we need to import a module called JSON. So at the top, let's import JSON. Then down here in the parse method, let's define a new variable called rasp equals to JSON dot load as, and then as an argument, we pass response dot body. So basically, JSON dot load as will convert or cast the JSON object we get from response dot body to a Python dict. Okay. Now, if we want to get the quotes key, we call rasp dot get and then the key quotes. Now let's store the result in a variable called quotes. And then let's print quotes. Control S to save the file. Let's execute again. I'm going to clear up everything. And then let's call the previous command. Okay, now let's check the output. So as you can see, we got a list which contain all the quotes, including the author key and the tags key, okay? Now, since we have a list, means we can loop through all the quotes and extract the data points we want. So, let's select this line, and then let's type for quote in quotes. And then I'm gonna yield a Python dict. I'm gonna set the first key as author, the second one as tags, and the last one as the quote text. Now back to Chrome. Let's go to the preview tab. So for each quote, we need to get into the author object. And then from the author object, we want to get the name key. Okay. So back to VS Code. So we call quote dot get. The key is author. And then from the author object, we want to also get the name key. Okay. Now back to Chrome again. Next, we want to extract the text key and then the text key. Okay. So we call quote dot get tags. And then finally, we call quote dot get name. Oh, sorry, text. Now control S to save the file. Let's execute again. Okay, now let's check the output. So as you can see, we got all the quotes of the first page. We have the author, the tags, and the quote text itself. So this was everything for this video. In the next one, I'm gonna show you how to handle pagination. So we are done with parsing the API. Now the next step is to handle pagination. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit until we get to the next page. Okay, here's the request. So let's open it up. So we have this key page equals to number two. And then we have this key has next equals to true. This means if we reach the last page, this has next key will be set to false, right? So I'm going to scroll down until I reach the last page. So five, six, seven, eight. We still have a couple of pages. Let's check. Okay, so here's the last request. So let's open it up. And as you can see, we have has next equals to false. Now, the reason why I've been focusing on that key 
is because we can use it as an indicator in our spider to see if there is a next page or not. If yes, we're gonna construct or build the next page URL. If it's set to false, this means we've reached the last page and there is no other page we can scrape, okay? So back to VS Code and outside the for loop, I'm gonna define a new variable called has underline next equals to resp dot get and the key is called has underline next. Next, we need to check if this variable is set to true. Then we need to get into the next page and scrape it. So if has underline next. In that case, we're gonna get the current page number and add one to it. Let me show you. So back to Chrome. So we're gonna get the current page number from this page key and then we're gonna add one to it. Okay, so back to VS Code again. I'm gonna set a variable called next and the line page and the line number equals to resp.get the key page and then we're gonna add one. Now finally let's yield scrapy.request. Let's set the URL equals to I'm gonna use Python 3 string formatting. So we start with F and then quotes, and then let's go ahead and copy this URL. Let's paste it here. And then all we need to do is we need to change this page number to, let's open two brackets, and then we call the next page number variable. And then let's go ahead and set the callback method equals to self.parse. Okay, now control S to save the file. Let's open up the integrated terminal. I'm gonna clear up everything and then let's execute again. Okay, now let's check the output. And first of all, as you can see, we got item scraped count equals to 100. This means we got 100 quote. So we have the author, the tags and the quote text. Now, one quick remark before we finish up this video. So not all APIs are the same. They don't share the same JSON object, nor the same structure. They are all different than each other. And that's why when scraping APIs, I highly recommend you to explore it first, try to understand its structure or how it works, because that's the main key that will help you scrape it as quickly as possible.